Hello everyone and welcome to another News Kulam video and another plug side chat. I wanted to bring up the topic of DC to DC adapters and frankly whether they should be prohibited. And I feel like there are two really strong arguments for why they should be, but I think one is significantly stronger than the other. And the first is just sort of an ethical argument, because right now the only real examples we have of DC to DC adapters are coming from Tesla, where they have a Chatamo to Tesla adapter that's pretty much used globally because Chatamo is a global standard, and a CCS2 to Tesla adapter that they're using for the European format. And the sort of ethical concern with that is Tesla has shown no inclination or no interest whatsoever in opening up their charging network to non-Tesla electric vehicles. Even in Europe, where they're now adding that CCS2 standard to their superchargers, to my knowledge, they've shown no interest in allowing other CCS-equipped vehicles to plug in and use that charger uh, even on a trial basis just to see you know, what the effect would be. So the big concern here is if Tesla floods the market with these adapters, well then what's going to happen is it's going to create a sort of imbalance in the public charging infrastructure and you're going to see a number of public charging spots occupied by Tesla vehicles and the alternate spot that is a dedicated supercharger won't be used by anybody. So you'll end up with a situation where it's sort of creating an imbalance in the public charging infrastructure and having a disproportionately negative effect on non-Tesla EV owners. Now, I mean, that could be just a worst case doomsday scenario. Uh, and I do acknowledge that, hey, the public charging infrastructure is there publicly, which is why I think that that ethical argument holds the least weight, right? I mean, you'd hope that Tesla would do the right thing, but so far there's no indication that they would. And I foresee issues, especially on days when there's high volumes of traffic for at least the next five to 10 years before the public charging infrastructure can catch up, uh, where you're going to end up seeing travel made really, really difficult for non-Tesla EV owners and maybe moderately difficult for Tesla owners because the superchargers do fill up quickly too on high demand days. But again, when you have the option of using one or the other, when everybody else is stuck using only one of those options, well, it creates again a, an imbalance where you know, we're not utilizing our infrastructure as effectively and efficiently as we probably should. But outside of that ethical issue, I think there's a more important issue at hand, and that's who's certifying these adapters. So I'm seeing more and more reports of Tesla owners using what, what's called a J adapter. It's the adapter that allows them to use the J1772 standard. Now, granted, that's a low power AC adapter, but there are a number of issues with it. And a lot of these uh, Volta chargers, if you're not familiar with them, they're free to use chargers at retail centers that recoup their money by showing advertisements on billboards. Well, a number of Volta chargers are being broken. Uh, these, uh, these adapter heads apparently aren't fitting with this J1772 standard. And it makes me wonder, are, are these J adapters UL certified? Are they certified by SAE, the ones who govern the standards for the J1772 and CCS plugs? If not, they really need to be. And, you know, I'm not necessarily a fan of a hard prohibition on using an adapter at a high power DC charger. But there needs to be some sort of outside third party governance, uh, some sort of quality control, because I don't really see that uh, happening at this point. And AC adapters are one thing. DC to DC adapters, especially these super high power adapters that are going to be much more than the 125 amps that currently can be transferred on the Chatamo adapter. 
these create a dangerous situation. We saw every charger in the United States that's faster than 50 kilowatts shut down because there was a potential that water might have been entering into the actual plug head. That's a, a dangerous situation, right? And now we're taking an unregulated adapter, putting it in the hands of private citizens and expecting them to upkeep it and use it properly. Because again, the consequences of something going wrong, we're talking about dismemberment and death. We're talking about massive amounts of property damage, uh, possibly cascading effects to the rest of the power grid, you know, shutting down potential corridors that might be needed uh, for inner city travel. So the consequences and risks involved with something going wrong with a high power adapter that's not certified and not guaranteed by an outside agency, that's kind of dangerous. And I think it is definitely something uh, that's worthy of concern. I mean, we're already seeing fires that are happening a little bit more frequently than I'm personally comfortable with. And we don't have a good valid explanation for why these vehicles are catching on fire. Uh, you know, and one of them recently in Antwerp, I believe it was, was at a supercharger while the vehicle was charging. Uh, I'm pretty sure that charger, at least the ones that were close to the fire, are now out of commission. Uh, again, this is something that it affects more than, you know, just the individual driver. It, it affects everybody else who's relying on those sites to travel as well. And you could potentially damage other people's cars in addition to the chargers. So I think we definitely, at the very least, need to move forward with caution. And I think there is a good call for having some sort of an outside agency uh, validating and verifying and uh, you know certifying any sort of adapter that we use, especially when it's coming to using something like a super high powered uh, DC charger where you're charging at rates of over 100 kilowatts, I, I think that sort of caution is not just advisable, I, I think it's just common sense. So I'd love to hear what you think. Are you as concerned about this as I am in terms of uh, how do we know that these uh, adapters are actually built to you know the quality specifications that would be required to handle that kind of power? Uh, should public charging providers be uh, allowed to restrict their chargers to only being plugged into cars and not allow third-party adapters to be used to connect a vehicle to the network? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel, and thank you for watching.